بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا فما بعد ما بعد أن سترز في أر إن أور كلاس أو تسكية النفس وتربية الأخلاق and as I keep saying in every class practically that please do not think that if you attend this class that you have achieved Tazkiyah. We are only talking about Tazkiyah. To get to have Tazkiyah to nafs, to purify our uh, hearts and our souls, we have to work on that. In any class I can only, I or whoever, any teacher can only tell you about it. He can tell you the benefits of it, he can tell you the um, the harm of not doing it and uh, he can explain it and say well this is what it means but beyond this nobody can do anything that has to come from ourselves we have to decide to change our lives and then we have to do something to actually create that change and that's why I recommend that and very strongly I suggest this to you inshallah may Allah make it easy for us now in any transformation process what is critical is to have a benchmark is to have a standard uh, against which we compare ourselves and say because at any point in time if we want to see how we are doing we have to measure ourselves and we measure ourselves against a an ideal standard a criterion so that we know well how we are doing vis-a-vis -vis that criteria Michael Harry the guy who um, who, who originated the Six Sigma uh, quality control concept, he said if you want to see what somebody, if you want to see what people value, see what they measure. <clears throat> he said if you want to see what people value, see what they measure. And therefore, as far as Tazkiyah is concerned, the standard. Now, question is, what is the standard? And the standard is, the Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is this is a very beautiful standard of uh, people who had achieved Tazkiyat al nafs because their teacher was the best uh, ever, and that was Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So let's see. Let's try to benchmark ourselves. Now the message of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah subhanahu wa taala sent. Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as his last and final messenger and therefore he did something that he had not done with any of the previous Anbiya Ali Muslim. He created a generation of people to continue the work of Dawat al-Islam after the passing away of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Nubuwat and Risalat stopped with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The work of Nubuwat and Risalat did not stop and cannot stop because the need for hidayah, need for guidance is like our need for food, for water, for, for air to breathe <coughs> and far more important than all of them put together because food, water, shelter, air, breathing and so on and so forth are restricted to this life. Once we die, we don't need any of that. But what we continue to need is the fruits of guidance which will go with us in our graves and into our akhirah. So that is why we deny and refute anyone who claims to be a Nabi after Muhammad Rasulullah because there is no need for any Nabi after him. Allah is not going to change anything so therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stopped the silsila and the continuum of Nubuat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the other hand created an entire group of people to be the uh, gold standard for the world to benchmark itself against to see if it's on the right path or not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave, the, gave uh, this ummah gave us the Muslims a very sacred and a very important task where he said kuntum khaira ummati nukhrijat li nas ta'muruna bil ma'rufi wa tanhawna lil munkari wa tuminuna billah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said you Muslims are the best of people ever raised up for mankind, you enjoy al-ma'roof, all that is good and permitted in Islam and forbid al-munkar or polytheism and all that Islam has forbidden and prohibited and you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kul hadihi sabili adur ila Allah ala basiratin ana wa manit tabani wa subhanallahi wa ma ana min al mushrikeen. Allah said, say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is my way. I invite you to, I invite towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sure knowledge and evidence and whosoever follows me must also invite towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sure knowledge and glorified and exalted be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala above all that they associate as partners with him and I am not of the mushrikun. In Surah Al-Fatiha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, gave us, taught us this dua, اِهْدِرَ الصَّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَلْضَالِّينَ Guide us to the way of steadfastness, the way of those on whom you bestowed your grace and your reward, not the way of those who earned your anger, nor of those who went astray. Who did Allah reward? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَنْ يُوتِي اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَمَنْ يُوتِي اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَمَنْ يُوتِي اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَأُولَئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ عَرَمَ اللَّهُ مِنَ النَّبِيِّ أَنَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّنَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَئِكَ رَفِيقًا اللَّهُ سَيَدْ وَمَنْ يُتِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَأُولَئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّنَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَئِكَ رَفِيقًا اللَّهُ سَيَدْ and whosoever obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then they will be in the company of those on whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed his grace from among the prophets and the siddiqoon and the martyrs and the righteous. And how excellent are these companions. So we have textual evidence of the fact that Dawat al-Islam, to present Islam to the world is our job. This is the responsibility that has been given to us. In the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was standing on the mountain of Ahad and with him were Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman radiallahu anhum ajma'in when he felt the tremor of an earthquake. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stamped his foot on the mountain and said, Why do you tremble when there is a Nabi, a Siddiq and two Shuhada standing on you? And this was the Bashara of uh, Shahada to Sayyidina Umar and Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu anhumah and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam honored Abu Bakr al-Siddiq by calling him a Siddiq. My brothers and sisters, the Sahaba are the standard and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala created this generation to be an example for the rest of the world until the end of time. This is the generation whose actions will be the standard against which the actions of all those who come after them will be measured to ascertain if they are up to the mark or not, right? Now, uh, that is the reason why it is so important for us to uh, remember these things and, uh, and to bring them into our lives, to follow these things uh, in, in all and complete sincerity. Finally, the <clears throat> According to me, one of the most important textual evidences with regard to the Sahaba being the standard for the judging of all the rest of the Ummah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to exempt us from being judged against this standard, even though it's a beautiful standard, because at least I know for my part that I will fail miserably if I am measured against any of the Sahaba. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the standard and uh, that generation of the Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa uh, to be an example for the world until the end of time. And this is the generation against whose actions will uh, will be measured the actions of all those who come after them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and see the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Tawbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَالسَّابِقُونَ لَوَلُونَ مِنَ الْمُحَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنْسَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُهُمْ بِحْسَانِ رضي الله عنهم وَعَدُوا عَنْهُ وَعَدَّ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي تَحْتَهَا الْأَنْهَارُ 
خالدین فیہا ابدا ذالک الفوز العظیم اللہ جل جلاله said which means the first سابقون الابلون the first and سابقون is in the sense of a race people who came first who made the effort who came first it's not first as in counting one two three four it's a question of who made the effort to come first so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here a sabiqun ala balloon the first of the first uh, to embrace Islam of the muhajirun and the ansar Allah is giving them these are the highest level uh, like the badreen who is the highest level and also those who followed them exactly in faith now this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalla shows his infinite mercy where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have said in this ayah for example وَسَابِقُنَ لَبَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُحَجِرِنَ وَالْأَنْسَارِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ وَرَضْوَانِ Allah could have said that رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ وَرَضْوَانِ Allah could have said that the uh, first to embrace Islam among the muhajirun and the ansar Allah is well pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah so the, 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 the argument is close it is something being said concerning these people and it relates to them and nobody else but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite mercy kept that door open he kept the door open for anybody who is interested in joining the sahaba ridwanullah alayhi majma'in uh, among those who Allah is pleased with so here Allah said وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُهُمْ بِحْسَانِ those who follow them but then there is a standard follow them in excellence not just follow them any, any way you like in excellence bil ihsan radi allahu anhum wa radu anhu allah is well pleased with them and they are well pleased with him wa adda lahum jannatin tajri tahta al anhar khalidin fiha abada zalika zalika al fawz al azim and allah said that he has prepared for them gardens under which rivers flow that is jannah to dwell therein to live therein forever and that is supreme success this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us with regard to the beautiful standard of the Sahaba Ridwan Allahi alayhi majma'in. Now, what are these qualities which we need to imbibe in ourselves and emulate? I have identified eight qualities of the Sahaba and of course it doesn't mean that they are restricted to the eight qualities. The Sahaba were people of, uh, of a completely unique nature and uh, Wallah alam there are probably hundreds of things in their, in their lives that we need to study and to emulate. But we start with what we can start with. So these eight, let me quickly enumerate them. One is Yaqeen. Complete and total certainty in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in Islam, in the message, every, at every level. Complete and total certainty, Yaqeen. Number two is Taqwa. Taqwa is to be aware of the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives. Number three is itaat, is to obey uh, Allah and His Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number four is adab, which is respect and a sense of reverence when approaching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the uh, matters of deen. Number five is infaq, which is generosity spending in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number six is shuja'at which is courage and bravery. Number seven is akhlaq which is our manners and how we deal with people and number eight is wafa which is faithfulness and um, faithfulness and uh, what's a good word for wafa? Anyway, faithfulness. Now let's see uh, each of these. We'll try to see how much how many we can do now. One is Yaqeen. Yaqeen is complete and certain belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and all the promises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the Sahaba Ridwan Allah alayhi wa sallam. Allah said, Amen al Rasulu bima unzila ilayhi min rabbihi wal mu'minun, kullun amana billahi wa rasuli, wa malaikatihi wa kutubi wa rasuli, la nufarriq bayna ahadim min rasuli. وَقَالُوا سَمَعَنَا وَاطَانَا وَفْرَانَكَ رَبَّنَا وَإِلَيْكَ الْمَصِيرِ The Messenger Muhammad ﷺ believes in what has been sent down to him from his Rabb and so do the believers. 
Each one believes in Allah, his angels, his books and his messengers and they say we make no distinction between one or another of his messengers and they say we hear and we obey and we seek your forgiveness our Rabb and to you is the return of all. The very Asbab al nuzul the very circumstances of revelation of this beautiful ayat e karima of Surah Al-Baqarah which is one of the last two ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah these two ayat have got enormous uh, fadail, enormous uh, benefits and enormous uh, praise for these ayat, their importance. And the Asbab al is very, is very interesting and very uh, salutary for us to learn from. It begins with the revelation of the ayat which is before this, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَإِن تُبْذُوا مَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَوْ تُخْفُوهُ يُحَاسِبْكُمْ بِهِلَا فَيَغْفِرُوا لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيُعَذِّبُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَاللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said which means Allah said that whatever is in the heavens and the earth belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of whatever is in your hearts and whatever is outside meaning what you say and you and you do and if he wants he will punish and if he wants he will forgive referring to whatever is in the hearts and whatever is outside and he's capable of doing whatever he likes when this ayat was revealed narrates that the sahaba went to Sallallahu and they literally went down on their knees before him. They didn't make sujood to him, but they went down on their knees in a, in, a, in a gesture of adab and a gesture of supplication, a gesture of, of begging him to intercede. And they said, Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, they said, Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have control over our speech and over our actions. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in this ayah that He will hold us accountable also for our thoughts and our desires and what is inside our hearts. They said we have no control over this. Thoughts will come, desires will come and go. We have no control over them. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to hold us accountable for them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if He wishes He can punish, then we will be destroyed. Now, Rasulullah's reaction to this was not what you might have expected. Because if you see this this excuse or, or this, uh, I don't want to use the word objection, this uh, uh, feeling of the Sahaba of, uh, of huge burden, that this huge, you know, uh, the, the fear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might, might punish them. Um, what they are saying seems may seem reasonable to us, right? I mean, we, we, they are saying that if Allah is holding us accountable for things which are not in our control, then we will be destroyed. I think this, I mean, I would say it sounds reasonable. I'm sure you would agree. But Rasulullah didn't think so. Rasulullah turned to them and he, he literally, they, they say that, the, the narrator says that his face, his blessed face became red with anger. And he said, are you going to be like those who said, Samayana wa Asayana? We hear, but we will not obey. Now, this is what the Bani Israel said to Musa He said, they said, we heard, we heard what you are saying, but sorry, we are not going to do it. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, will you be like them? He said, say, Samayana wa atana, ufrana ka rabbana wa ilayka al-masir. Qul, Samayana wa atana, ufrana ka rabbana wa ilayka al-masir. He said, say, O oh, our Rabb, we hear and we obey. We don't argue. We hear and we obey. Please forgive us and to you is our return. And the Sahaba, they repeated after Rasulullah Now the interesting thing is, you might say, well then what happened? Nothing happened. And nothing happened for 12 months. After 12 months, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها 
لها ما كسبت ولا هي وقت كسبت امن رسول and after that the rest of them so amal rasul ayat came after 12 months and then the other ayat which where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught the sahaba how to make dua so this ayat after 12 months allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayat and said the nabi and his messenger and his companions they believe in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the malaika the, the books and the and the messengers and so on and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that a person will not be given a heavier burden than what he can bear la yukallifu allah nafsan illa wusaha laha ma kasabat wa alayha ma kasabat a person will not be given more taklif than he can bear a person will not be given a heavier burden than he can carry and you will be responsible and you will be held accountable only for your deeds meaning what you say and what you do so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala basically what he said in the earlier ayah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Uh, revoked that and gave them relief and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught them to make dua rabbana la tuaqidna in nasina wa akhtana rabbana wa la tahmil alayna isran kama hamaltahu ala alladhina min qablina rabbana wa la tuhammilna ma la taqata lana bih wa afu anna wa akhfir lana wa arhamna anta mawdana khansuna ala al-qumil kafirin amin ya rabbil alameen allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught them to make dua now think about this my brothers and sisters for 12 months the sahaba were living under the under the, the the strict and stringent conditions that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was going to hold them accountable for even their thoughts and even their desires i don't even know how many sahaba in this period passed away which means till the last moment this is what they believed in and they and they went with that uh, thought in their minds now why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayat after 12 months he could have done it in the same day right it would have looked very dramatic i mean the, the sahaba are asking something the moment nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it they repeat it and then jibril alaihi salam comes and says this is what allah is saying but see see the honor of it because in the ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the words of his Nabi alayhi salam and he returned those words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam as his kalam to be recited in salat till the day of judgment right so this is the honor of obedience the wages of obedience is this honor but this came after 12 months now why now Allah alam why Allah only knows so i am not interpreting on, on i am not speaking on behalf of allah but my guess is that this was part of the very very tough tazkiyah wa tarbiyah that allah subhanahu wa taala did for that generation and this is another reason why tazkiyah is so important very tough tazkiyah wa tarbiyah allah subhanahu wa taala said i will hold you responsible for your thoughts and actions meaning thoughts and thoughts and desires meaning what meaning train yourself in such a way that not only will you not do wrong you will not even think about wrong you will not even wish for wrong so then when the when when this uh, tough condition was removed there was no danger of this have a falling into any kind of uh, any kind of wrong doing right this is the this is the beauty of the um, of this tarbiyah now who are these people who were uh who had this level of yaqeen samayana wa tara complete and total uh yaqeen and complete and total obedience to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the first of them was of course abu bakr as-siddiq radhiyallahu anhu right total yaqeen two beautiful uh waqiat two beautiful stories from the sira of Abu Bakr Siddiq radhiyallahu anhu and his and his complete yaqeen the first is where in Isra wal Mi'raj after Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam returned from Isra wal Mi'raj i am not uh, i am making the story brief um, there was much derision and much uh, you know people laughing and joking and what not about the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his claim that he had gone from Makkah to Jerusalem and then the heavens and back 
So somebody came to Avokar Siddhi Khradalana because he was not there at the time. He was somewhere else. So they came to him and they said, do you know what your friend is saying? So then Avokar Siddhi Khradalana asked them, he said, what is he saying? So they said all this. He said, this is what he claimed and how can it be possible? Right? So he's, he's made it up. This is something that he, uh, he seems to have made up. And they asked him, what do you think? And Abu Bakr Siddiq's words were so beautiful and so remarkable. He said, if he said that, I believe. If he said that, I believe. Now this principle is used to this day in the authentication of Hadith. If he said that, we believe. We don't say, if he said that, if it sounds reasonable, if it sounds logical, if it sounds scientifically possible, we don't say all this. We say, if Rasulullah said this, we believe. So the Muhaddithin, when they research about in, in the in the in the hadith, they are not looking to see whether the hadith makes its logical sense, scientific sense, what not, what not. The hadith make all those, but the point is they are not looking for that. They are just looking to see did Rasulullah actually say whatever is reported uh, about him. And Abu Bakr Siddiq was totally yaqeen. Is seen in this where he said, if he said it, I believe it. So they asked him, he said, how can you believe this? Look at this thing. This whole thing is so, uh, seems to be so completely, uh, uh, you know, fantastic, uh, so unreal. How can anybody, it takes us months. They said, it, they said it takes us months to go from Makkah to Jerusalem. And he said he did all this in one night. And he went to Makkah, from Makkah to Jerusalem, then into the seven heavens and came back and all this, all in one night. How is it possible? How do you believe this? Abu Siddiq Radhalana said, we already believe more than this. He said, we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have we seen Allah? We believe in Jannah and Jahannam. Have we seen Jannah and Jahannam? He said, we believe in the resurrection, the day that we will be resurrected and we will stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. Have, do, have we seen that? Right? So he said that we have seen, we believe in so many things which we haven't seen. So what is one more? We believe because we believe Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And he says if we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the, of the of the heavens and the earth, you just think about this. If we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who created everything, what's so difficult for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take his Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam on a multidimensional journey? Similarly, in the in the Sulay Hudaybiyah, in the at the time of Hudaybiyah when Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam was uh, negotiating the treaty of Hudaybiyah. There is this famous uh, incident which is which is narrated by um, about Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab where he was so upset with the treaty and what was happening with that treaty and how it was being written and so on that uh, he went to Rasulullah because the, the treaty was very one-sided, as you know, right? Very one-sided, and the Muslims were, uh, were being literally humiliated with this treaty. And Rasulullah was not fighting it. He was just, he agreed to everything, whatever the Quraysh was saying. Because he was he was responding to the guidance that he was receiving from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, he was doing what Allah wanted him to do. Uh, now, obviously, Given the circumstances and what was happening there, all this could not be explained to each individual person. So people had to trust him. So Sayyidina Amar Adelano went to Mr. Salam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, is it not true that you are the Nabi of Allah? Nabi Salam said, yes, it is true. He said, is it not true that we are on the on the haq and these people are on batil? We are on the truth and these people are, are on falsehood. Is, is this not true? Rasulullah said, yes, it is true. Sayyidina Umar said, then why, we, then why are we accepting this treaty? Let us fight. If they stop us from making Umrah, we will fight. But this was not the mashiyat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted. And therefore, Rabbi Sallallahu was being instructed to uh, accept this treaty. Now, Rasulullah uh, said to Sayyidina Umar, my Rabb will not let me down. But he didn't change the treaty. So Sayyidina Amar Radhi was still very upset. He came to Abu Ghar Siddiq Radhi and he said, he asked him, he said, what is happening here? Is it not true that he is, this, he is the messenger of Allah? Sayyidina Abu Ghar said, yes, it is true. 
Then Sayyidina Omar said, is it not true that we are on the truth and these people are, 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 on, the, are on falsehood? Sayyidina Abu Bakr Sadiq said, yes, that is also true. So Sayyidina Omar said, then why are we signing this treaty? Abu Bakr Sadiq said to Sayyidina Omar, he said, stop speaking. Stop making these statements. He said, grab hold of the stirrup of Rasulullah Sallallahu He said, he will see you through to the right hand. His rub will not let him down. Allah will not uh, stop supporting Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he will win. He said he's doing what he's doing because he is being guided. You stay out of this. Now this again showed the tremendous yaqeen that Abu Bakr Siddiq had in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and in this whole issue of Islam and the matter of Ghaib. Now, how does this relate with our Tazkiyah is to look at our hearts and say what do we believe? What is our Yaqeen? How strong is that Yaqeen? The sign of Yaqeen is the absence of stress, is the absence of depression, is the absence of all kinds of doubt. If doubt is there, then it means Yaqeen is not there. Doubt and Yaqeen cannot exist together in the same chamber. Just like you cannot have dark sunlight. Darkness is the name of the absence of light. If there is light, there is no darkness. You can create light, you cannot create darkness. So you can create Yaqeen and if you create Yaqeen, then all forms of anxiety, all forms of stress, they go away. Complete and total yaqeen on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and on the promises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalla. The first among them is the meeting with him on the day of Jalla. Brothers and sisters, I remind myself and you, the purpose of all these, these lectures of Taskia is for us to do Taskia. So let us try to get in touch with ourselves, with, with our nafs, with our heart and see what is there, see what is there and remove it, remove all the dross, all the dirt and garbage that's there in the heart. One of the, one of the very important ways of doing that is to pray tahajjud without fail and to make a lot of dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Try to do that as much as possible inshallah. Make this into a routine for yourself, wake up for tahajjud Pray tahajjud, make dua, then read some Quran, and then for Salatul Fajr go to the masjid. Make this into a routine for yourself, inshallah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be pleased with you and never to be displeased. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you and to uh, purify your hearts for His pleasure and to illuminate your hearts with His nur. وصلى الله على نبي الكريم وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين برحمتك يا رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته